crazy. Tell them, look at your neighbor, say, you're about to grow crazy. crazy. Hallelujah, you're about to grow. Tell them, I didn't say go crazy. I said, you're about to grow crazy. You're about to grow crazy. Um, <clears throat> one of the assignments here at the Empowerment Center is um, to educate. To educate. Um, in other words, um, there's a responsibility that I have as your leader to teach you, to make sure that you understand the principles of the Word of God. Say principles. Okay. Many of us in here today, we want to possess the promises. Anybody believe in the promises of God? In other words, there are some things that God said He was going to do that you expected Him to do. That's the promise. Look at somebody said, I'm waiting on the promise. But the principles are the part of the equation that is responsible for the manifestation of the promise. If I don't work the principles, then I will never see the promise. Um, the promise is four, the sum total. But two plus two is the principle that gives you the sum total of four. If you don't work the principles, you will never see the manifestations of the promise. And many of us want to jump right and receive promises when we are overlooking the principles. Look at somebody say, you got to work the principles. You got to work the principles. And so here in Mark, uh, Jesus begins to give us a parable. A parable is a divine truth utilizing an earthly example to convey a spiritual concept. He's using a natural example to uh, explain or demonstrate a spiritual principle. He is bringing the truth and placing it in a, on a level that you can comprehend it or understand it. I want you to know that the Bible says that my people perish for their lack of knowledge. And so, so your ignorance can keep you locked on the level when God desires to take you to another dimension. But if you lack the information, you will stay stuck on that level. Look at somebody say, you need more information. You more empty information. And so it is, it is our responsibility as leaders, as fivefold ministry gifts, to educate, to equip, to empower. We have to put you in a position to reap the full benefits of the word of God. But you will not be able to prosper beyond your level of understanding. Hallelujah. If I do not comprehend the word of God, if I do not uh, understand the word of God, then I will always be limited because I will not be in a position to work the principles. Somebody say principles. The law of gravity is a principle. This is a divine law that governs the entire universe. The law of gravity applies to everyone, whether you're saved or whether you're a Muslim, whether no matter who you are, whether you live in China, wherever, if you're on the earth, the, the principle of gravity applies to you. If you don't believe it, do me a favor. Go out here, take a break. We're going to wait on you. Go out here, climb up on this building, and just take a leap of faith. <laughs> then you will find that the, the, the law of gravity will introduce itself to you. And so this is a law that God put in the universe that it, and the earth that has to be obeyed. So it is my job, my responsibility to come into alignment with the principles that God has already been and put in place that I may see the manifestation of the promise. Look at somebody say, I'm, working, I'm, wait, I'm waiting on the promise. I'm waiting on the promise. So Jesus is using a parable to reveal a principles in order that you may uh, receive promises. He says, the kingdom of God is like it. In other words, he says, if you want to know how my kingdom operates, he says, here's an example. He says, how shall we picture it? In other words, Jesus is saying, I want to put this picture in your imagination. In other words, he says, I want you to visually process what I'm teaching you. Look at somebody say, see it in your mind. Your imagination is the creative capacity of your mind. It is the ability to picture something before you ever see it in reality. Look at somebody say, I have a vivid imagination. Tell as a matter of fact, I can already see myself being blessed. I can already see myself going to my next level because I have a great imagination. Your imagination must learn, your imagination must supersede your reality. Ooh. The imagination is so powerful. That the imagination, if you begin to paint the picture in your mind, then time and all that exists within reality begin to work with you to bring to pass those things that you're picturing in your mind. Yeah. Let me tell you how powerful your imagination is. Have you ever been sitting by yourself and something may have happened to you years ago and all of a sudden uh, you begin to relive that experience? 
And you find yourself crying over something that happened 10 years ago, but it's just you're just reliving it in your mind. That's your imagination. You're, you're seeing it happening again, but it's affecting you physically because you're crying. Somebody say, I have a powerful imagination. It is the creative aspect of your mind. It's the ability to see a picture within the facet of your mind. So he says, I want you to picture this. He says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Say mustard seed. When, when it is sown in the ground, it is smaller than all the seeds of the earth. And so here Jesus introduces that the kingdom of God operates on the system of the seed. Write that down. The system of the seed. This is another thing. I know you got a great memory, but don't trust your memory. From now on, bring notes and pencil and paper and take notes. Amen. Because it shows the level of respect for the principles that God has given you. And you're going to see why you need to take notes before you leave here. Amen. Say seed. seed. Say the system of the seed. The kingdom of God operates on the system of the seeds. Of the seed. It says so. It is sown on the ground. It is small. Small. Say small. Let me stop right there. So just because something is small does not mean that it's insignificant. And many of your problem is you try to determine something significant by its size. But the Bible says that despise not the day of small beginnings. Just because something starts small does not mean it is designated to stay small. Who prophesied to somebody right next to you and say you started small but you're not going to stay small. Anything that starts out as a seed has the potential to grow and produce something great. Look at somebody say stop judging my seed. Stop judging my seed. Stop. It is immature for you to limit your progression and your ability to grow when your life is still in seed form. Tell your name I'm just getting started. So stop criticizing my seed. This is this is this house that I live in right now. This is only, this is my seed. Stop criticizing. The car that you see out in the parking lot, that's a seed. My business, I might not have the clientele that I want right now. I may not be on the level, but that's my seed. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Say neighbor, don't despise your seed. Because the power of the seed is because anything, the future of everything that exists begin with a seed. Everything that you see around you begin with a seed. I got news for you. Let's take biology. All of you in here, you are here. Your existence is here today because your father sold a seed in your mother. <laughs> let's, get it, let's keep it rated PG. <laughs> the reason that you are here because your father, whether you like him or not, whether you got a good relationship or not, whether he was there or not, you are here because he sold a seed in your mother. And so you are here because of a seed. Say, I'm here because of a seed. And so as we go into this series, Let's Go Crazy, today we're talking about the law of the seed. The law of the seed, the significance of a seed. Something can start out small, but because it's, it, it's in that germinating period, you cannot reduce its effect in it because you don't see the full potential of it right then. Listen now, listen as the parable says. It says, but when it is sown, it grows up. Look at somebody say, grow, let's grow crazy. It grows up and becomes greater. And so as the seed goes through development, it becomes greater. Mm -hmm. And so listen, every seed has potential. Are you listening to me? Every seed has potential. Regardless of the size of the seed, every seed has potential to reproduce and become greater. Look at somebody say, you're becoming greater. You're becoming greater. It says, when this song grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoot out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under shade. So something as small as a mustard seed, it is so small, it, when it's sown, when it goes through its gestational period, when it comes to a place of being fully developed, it gets so big that the birds can rest upon it. Can I take a prophetic pause right here and tell you there is something that God has placed in your hands that you have reduced the significance of it, but you don't understand that's your seed. And that very thing that you don't understand the value of it because it's in seed form, that very thing, if you take care of it, it's going to be in a position to be a blessing to your entire family. Oh, look at somebody say, don't, don't, don't mess with my seed. Don't mess with my seed. Don't mess with my seed. I need my demonstration. Don't mess with my seed. So the, the, I, I, want to, I want to give you a picture. 
I want you to understand the significance and the value of a seed. Look at somebody say, you have seed. Yes. Tell them, as a matter of fact, you are a walking seed. <laughs> Granted, it has the ability to reproduce after its own kind. Hallelujah. Now let's give our men of God a hand right quick. Now they're, they're, they're about to sow into your life. This is what I want you to do. Minister Collins, I want you to serve this side. Minister LaCour, I want you to serve this side. I just simply, give me that. I just simply want you, each, everyone in, in here, I want you to get one seed. Say one seed. One say follow your instructions. And Jay say, give her a seed, give her her seed. <laughs> Look at your seed as you receive it. Look at that seed. Look how small it is. Now here's another thing. Don't eat your seed. <laughs> don't eat your seed because it's a sunflower seed. And I know you love sunflower seed. But don't eat your seed. Now I'm not going to touch that because it's getting ahead of my, of my message. But don't eat your seed. Look at your neighbor and say, don't eat your seed. <laughs> Everything that begins start in seed form. So, within, so listen to this. Within the seed is everything that's needed to be successful. The seed comes packaged for success. Are oh, they not listening to me? The seed has everything within itself to produce success. Oh, look at somebody say, what you need is already in you. What you if I'm a seed, everything that I need is already in me. It's already in me. It's already in me. Look at this, how small it is. Seems so insignificant. Look how small it is. Everybody got a seed. Now look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't lose your seed. That's very important. Don't lose your seed. Can we have an unusual service today? Hallelujah. Don't lose your Look at your neighbor. Say, you got your seed? So take care of your seed now. Because your future is in your seed. Your future is in your seed. If you were not planted in seed form in your mother, then you wouldn't be here. If you were not planted in your mother's womb, you wouldn't be here. So you are here because of a seed. So now listen to me. Everything that you want to see in your life, God will give it to you in seed form. If I don't understand the significance and the value of a seed, what I've been praying for, I may overlook because it came to me in seed form. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look, at, look at your seed. Hold it in your hand. Look at your seed. Look, look at your seed. Look at your seed. What you did? She put hers in a purse. She, she going to lose her seed. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, if you lose your seed, you're going to lose your future. <laughs> Genesis 1 and 11. Say, I got my seed, I got my seed, I got my seed. You are a walking seed. Genesis 1 and 11. So in Mark 4, verses 30 through 30, 32, Jesus established the system of the seed. The kingdom operates of the seed system. The principle of the seed. Do you understand it? Are you listening? Are you listening? Now, it's going to be very difficult for some of you to pay attention during this service, but it is required. Because you need to grab these principles in order to see the promises manifested in your life. Okay? Genesis 1.11. When you have it, say, I have it. It says, then God said, who said? Let the earth bring forth grass, and the earth that yields what? Shall seed. And the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself. Stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Write this down. The law of the seed. 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 Jesus introduced the system of the seed. Now, Genesis is introducing the principle of the seed. What is the principle of the seed? The principle of the seed says every seed has to reproduce after its own kind. And so in other words, whatever type of seed it is, it has to produce that type of fruit. And so, just like the law of gravity, it's a law that's in place that cannot be changed. And so, if the seed is an apple seed, 
then if I plant an apple seed, I cannot get an orange or a banana. Why? Because the law of the seed. The law of the seed. Every seed has to bring forth after his own kind. So look at somebody say, he's building a foundation. It says, who, uh, fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself. So once the seed begins to be planted, it goes through its gestational period. It grows. It begins to uh, develop a plant. It yields fruit. Once the fruit is here, the fruit contains seed within itself to start the process all over again. And so the seed starts a system, write this down, of reproduction. Ooh, I need you to hear what I'm saying. The seed starts a system of reproduction. Meaning that once a seed is planted, it continues to reproduce. Over and 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 over. Multiplication is in the seed. Increase. The seed is already programmed to increase. You don't have to tell the seed what to do. The seed already knows what to do. Because the seed came packaged with its own instruction manual within it. The seed already know. Once I get in the right atmosphere, what to do? Look at somebody say, once you get me in the right atmosphere, I already know what to do. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I submit to you that many of you may not be seeing the level of productivity that you need because you are seed that's in the wrong atmosphere. Every seed has to be in the right soil. Ooh. That's why the Bible says, they that are planted, put your feet down, planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. And so if I'm going to be prosperous, I have to be planted. Yeah. But where did the plant come from? Seed. Look at your little seed. Look at that little seed. Compare that seed to you. Look how little that seed is. So something small is significant. It's a small thing. Jesus said, if you're faithful over the least small things, I make you rule. I bring increase in your life. I give you dominion. I make you rule over men. And so many of you are asking God for great things, but you're not great stewards over the small. Oh, that's what's, oh, maybe that's what our problem is. We're looking for big things when we overlook it and stepping over seeds that God has already placed in our life. Sometimes the, pray, the prayers that you're asking and the promises that you're asking, God will release in seed form in the form of an idea in your mind. So the wealth and the riches that you've been praying for, the increase, God may have already downloaded in your mind. What you call an idea, a thought that came to your mind, you know, mm, it's a good idea. That was 10 years ago and it's still in your mind. Look at your seed. Look at your seed. Look at your seed. Look at it. Look at it in your hand. I want you to get a visual. Write this down. A seed only finds its purpose in soil. Ooh, that's so good. You can't observe your seed. You can't just, just look at it and, and honor your seed. This is a beautiful seed. I'm going to take care of my seed. Keep your seed in your pocket. I'm going I'm, to I'm walk around. I'm going to make sure nothing happens to my seed. But even though you're walking around with potential for a greater future, if it's, ne if it's never sown or planted, then the seed doesn't come alive. <laughs> when you put a seed in its proper atmosphere, what we call soil, that seed becomes, begins, begins to come alive. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't admire your seed by looking at it. You have to plant your seed so that what's in your seed becomes activated. I'm trying to make you understand today that your future has already been given to you in seed form. You may be failing to recognize it because God dropped a seed in your spirit and you thought because it was so small it was insignificant. <laughs> this building that you see here started with an idea. Somebody saw this in their mind. It was a seed. This ministry started with an idea. We heard this from God. It was a seed. It was just, it was just a thought in our mind. Purpose for living in power and center. That was a thought and an idea. Let me ask you a question. What seeds are you walking around with today? <laughs> that you are admiring? That you're looking at but you have failed to plant? 
A seed that is not planted is a seed that will never yield a harvest. Listen now. And the earth brought forth grass, an earth that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself.